Hi and welcome to this sixth video, I think it is, uh, about how to create your own Sentinel robot from the Matrix in Gazebo with the help of ROS Development Studio. So if you remember the last video, we more or less had the robot finished and what we have to do now is add uh, some details. So this model is really complex, so I won't show you how to add each of each and one of all the parts that it has, but more the basic ones. And also we are going to learn in this video how to add some, some kind of texture of some kind to your STL model so that it appears a bit better and not like this because like this it's, it's hours and hours of of UV mapping and so on, but something simple for the start and then you can mm, spend more time to get it to look just like this or better, okay? So let's go. So the first thing, as always, you have to go to uh, the console.sim, uh, the console.sim.com and go to ROS development and inside here you have to sign in to get inside ROS Development Studio. Once you're inside, you'll get something similar to this once you launch your project, okay, that you did the first in the first video. So if you don't have if you don't know how to do it, please go back to the first video and you'll see more or less how you do that. Okay. That's it. By the way, all the code that I'm going to explain now, it's it will be uploaded to this git, which you can uh, download, no problem. So that way you'll have the, the most updated version of, of the Sentinel robot, okay? So let's have a look. Uh, let's close this because we don't uh, need it anymore. Let's open an IDE. I'll open it in a new tab because I'm more comfortable like that. Then another one, a shell here, okay, there we go. I'm going to, well, let's, so first, thing, first things first, you have the Sentinel package, Sentinel description, and inside we have our classical files, but you'll see that we have some extra files here. So let's have a look. Uh, so we want to add the arms and the eyes. Okay, so to add the arms and the eyes, you'll have to go first here, like always, go to Sentinel URDF Chakra, and inside here you'll have to add these chakras. So the eyes and the arms. Okay, uh, so let's have a look. How do we add it? How do they work? So let's have a look first to arms. Let me have a look. There we go. Arms. So arms is as basically all the files that we have done. It's made up of chakras. And at the end, we have the use of those chakras to link it, link the arms, in this case, to the main body. Yeah. So here, as you can see, I'm adding one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And each one is positioned in a different place. But you can see that because this robot is symmetric, Okay, so let me show you what I'm talking about. So what we are going to add are these these arms in the sides on the sides. So you can see that because it's sim sim symmetric, uh, it's you only have to do half of them, and the other half is the other way round. Essentially, is that the idea? So you you can do 
the first five arms and then the other side, so the left side, then the right side is exactly the same but with the X changed and also it has uh, the rotations changed because of the angle in which the arm appears. You'll see it in a minute when we spawn it but basically you have to change the orientation and this is one of the most tricky parts which is basically by trial and error if you don't have the original SOLIDWORKS or designing model to get the coordinates and the roll pitch and yaw right. So let's have a look to the macro. So the macro is quite simple. You have arm body, then you have to give it the arm body number, so one, two, three, four, five, depending on the, the arm. Then we have the positions of the joint and the roll pitch and yaw of also the joint. Then we have just one link, which is the, the Sentinel. And in this case, we have a, a box of collision, which is not, it's really fake because I'm using here the claw finger base. It, it really doesn't matter because these arms are just mm, decorations. So they are aesthetic, they're not functional. So basically I've done a small box, that's it. And on the mass, I've just recycled it. So nothing important there. But here is where we are using the, the meshes. And see here that I'm adding the, a die instead of an STL. That's because this is the model with the textures, which you'll see in a minute. But we're talking about this. So we have this link, then the gazebo, then the joint that connects it to the body and then a transmission just in case we want to activate it. In this case, we haven't, but we want. if we want, we just have to uh, generate the controllers. That's it. And that's basically it. The most tricky part of the arm is getting these um, roll pitch and yaw right, because if you go to Blender, let's, let's see uh, an example, because it, it's... It's the most tricky part, and I think it's the most important thing to talk about. So if we go to our um, model, for example, and we get the torso. Okay, we have the torso here, and then we import STL, and we import the arms. Uh, so there we go. So the problem is, how, how can I get those values? So the values, I got them. The position, it's quite simple because you just have to position the origin of this arm here, more or less where the connection is. So this, this hole here. Let me just orient this a bit better. There you go. So we have to orient this around this hole. But the problem is, how do you rotate it? It's, it's not trivial. And if you try to rotate, for example, in Z, okay, we are getting there, more or less. Yeah, then we rotate in Y, for example. Yeah, there we go, more or less, yeah. Then we rotate in Z, maybe. But you see that it's, it's not easy to get it right, okay? So it's just trying and trying until you get the values that you want. And once you have them, you see that here, if you press N, you see the location and the rotation in degrees. So that's what I've used as template to then put it in the values that we have here. So if we go to common properties, I've generated um, some values. And as you can see, these values, I got them from Blender, okay? And then the rotation is these degrees turned into radians, but it's a bit more tricky than that because when you put those values, because these values are not roll, pitch and yaw, 
these values, it won't work. It won't position the arm like this. So you'll have to tweak it and try different combinations of, of signs of the elements until you get it right. That's why I'm giving you more or less this because this is the configuration that gives them the correct values as, as far as I, I want it to have them, okay? That's as far as the arms are concerned. Then the eyes. The eyes, we are talking about this, of course. So we, we are going to add only the central eye and the two of the sides, but of course this has many eyes. So bear that in mind that if you want, you can add them. And um, probably I'll add them if I have time. So let's go to the eyes quick and see what we have here. So we have two macros. We have the macro of central eye and we have the macro of lateral eye because they differ in the elements that they use, the meshes and uh, the positioning. And then at the end, we see that we call them, we call the central eye, the lateral eye and the lateral eye again with value left and right, simple. And inside here, in the central, we're giving the central eye joint Z position. Why? Because, let me just show you. So if you go here and you input again, let's say STL, we go to the eyes, head, we get the eye large, you see that to position it, you just have to go up in Z axis, and that's it. That's why we only need that value. We also need the, the yaw, so change the yaw, because this goes with a, a piece, which is the eyelid, it's called the eyelid. And uh, let me just, there we go. So the eyelid goes here, yeah. And if you, if we go up, let me, there we go. So if we go here, you see that it's not centered. So you have to turn it in Z, in the yaw, so that it aligns perfectly, yeah. That way, maybe if I, I give it a material just to see that it's correctly aligned. So there we go. So if we don't align it correctly, what we have is something like this, you see? So that's what we have to change also. So as you see, Blender is a very good tool to try to assemble elements, it's very good. So each one of these is also very simple. They are fixed because they don't turn, they don't move. And basically it's the same thing. We have a central. In this case, we are using as, as collisions, we are using the bounding box. So if you go here and you, let's just delete this. We don't need it anymore. Uh, this either we need it. So if we go here, and select the view of bounding box. You see, this is more or less the bounding, this is the bounding box of this element, and this is other values. So we are using those values to generate a kind of box for the collisions. So it's quite handy. And so we have this central eye link, then the central eye lid, which is this cap that we had here before, and then we connect it to the body. That's it. Lateral eye, same thing. Just that you need to position X, Y, and Z for this. So we're giving that, but we it's the same structure, just that we are using side to make a difference between the left and the right. And that's it. This is to get the model complete. So let's have a look at the model. So we are going to Sentinel, let me, sorry, velocity Sentinel, there you go, scripts, then I'm going to launch Spawn Sentinel, 
For that, we have to first launch our uh, main.launch. There we go. Okay, so we have our empty simulation here and we are going to spawn it. Let's see that there's nothing wrong here. Okay, there we go. And it's spawning. There we have it. So as you can see, I already did the meshes for you. So you see that we have the black textures that you're going to see in a minute. How do you do it? And also how do you do these emissive materials for the, the eyes? As you can see, we added just these lateral eyes and a central one and all these arms, this 10 glorious arms. And in this case, we just have testing uh, tentacles here too with the, the claws, okay? So the second part of this video is about how do we add all this? How do we put this, this mesh with textures? So for that, we have to go to Blender and I'll show you how to do it in one element, just one element, and then you can reproduce it. So first things first, you have to start with a Blender uh, empty space. Then we select and remove everything. We get out the tools. We click here and we put this double. Then we go to UV and we have it set when we put this. So we have it all set up to work with uh, textures. So this method is not mine, is I've, I've borrowed it from a YouTuber that they borrowed it from another YouTuber, but I found it very intuitive and very easy to start working with uh, textures. Yeah, and, and get very good results with very, uh, so very fast. Step one. When you, have, when you have this, you have to import your STL. Let's go to head, uh, for example, body. Um, let's do, I don't know. Let me do the arms and let's do another arm, for example. Uh, hook. Let's do the arm, okay? This one. So as you can see, this is a, a simple arm with no textures. So we don't have any textures here, nothing. Okay, I've activated the, the key prompter. So first things first, you have to go to uh, edit mode, then press U and wrap, smart unwrap. And this unwraps all the meshes all the mesh onto a plane. This is how you do its UV mapping. And now you just have to open, you have to go to, let me go to texture files. You select the texture that you want. In this case, I'm going to show you, yeah, I think you'll see it here. So in this case, I want to do it metal. So I've got a JPEG uh, that it's black metal and there you go it's like a kind of texture but you see that the definition is, is quite low I've lowered it to make the loadings uh, faster because we don't need like that it looks crisp clear we want a fast simulation so it's it's a bit stupid to put it with high definition if you don't need it and that's it. So like this, we now have textures. So to make it that it imports correctly, we just have to add a new material. We change the values if we want here. Okay. 
And this is a very important thing. If we wanted that this was a light, we have to change the emissive properties. Yeah? And then, so we added this material, we add emissive or not. In the case of the lights we do, in this case, it's not necessary. I mean, it, it's, it would be look strange. Then we add a texture, we open, we select the texture, and there you go. So now you see that the material is black here. Now it's a ball with our texture here. So if we go to materials, you see that now the material looks like that. That's because we've made changes in the, the emissive. So you, you see that if we put a lot of the emissive, you see more of the texture. If we don't, that, then it's black, like, like in, in our case. So in my case, I like it just black. But if you want the textures to see more or less, you can change the emissive power here, okay? And that's quite it. So now you just have to export it. Export to the, the format that you want. In this case, we want dyes. Then we go to our desktop and, uh, I don't know, and <clears throat> here, for example, then we have to select copy the materials and that's it. We put a name and we export it. And once we have it, we have to go back here and go to meshes. Go to meshes and upload it. For uploading, just click here, upload local files and you can select the file that you want and it uploads. Yeah, and that's it. Like that, you'll have your own Sentinel. So as, as you can see here, the emissive is quite interesting because if you put emissive power in the simulation, it works pretty well. Let me just turn off the lights. And you see, so the only things that are emissive in this case are the eyes but you can make it emissive, like the, the red parts of the, the tentacles and so on. It depends, it's up to you. We leave it here for today. Please consider subscribing to our channel. We publish every day Rosh related content. We would love to see your own crazy robotics projects. So post videos, gits or whatever you want in the comments below. Have fun with robots and see you in the next video. Bye.